Extend your hand towards me, if you would. Let's pray. Lord, thanks for today. We love you and praise you and ask you to come. Holy Spirit, let my words be yours and yours be mine. Be our teacher and minister to each and every one of us. Blessing to those that are watching today online. Healing, miracles, and everybody said amen. All right. Also, uh, this is my wife, Jane. Stand up and just wave at everybody, if you would. Praise the Lord. She's alive and well. I'm alive and well. Praise the Lord. We'll have a prayer line up here when we're done today. If you would like to receive Christ, you need prayer for healing or some kind of miracle in your life. Monday night, we have prayer. Join us if you can as we pray for some of our church family that are really struggling right now, as well as extended family, the nations, etc. battles that are taking place. We have brothers and sisters on both lines of all battles in all nations, and praise the Lord, we're there to help. Say together, we're there to help. We appreciate all your prayers and all you've done for my wife and I the last year as we've had some real battles. And uh, we're well and strong, and I feel great. All right, let's say together. He has risen. Matthew chapter 25, if you want to turn your Bibles there, I want to read for a little bit, verses 1 through 7. He is risen. Come on, let's say it together again. He is risen. I'm going to preach for a while, not too long, Lord willing. And we have, I'm going to choose a few people that will come up. Uh, There's some prophetic words that they would I felt led of the Lord to give to the congregation. So I may call some of you up afterwards. I want everyone to know, you know, they have a word that came forward during worship as they feel inspired the Holy Spirit to share, to encourage the body of Christ. Can I hear an amen? We believe such words can come from the Holy Spirit to bless us and encourage us, to edify us and build us up. We'll probably have a few of those that close this session when I finish preaching today. And uh, to be encouraged, say together, to be encouraged. And the Lord wants us to judge those words in light of the Scripture. So we have an understanding of the Word of God, and we can be encouraged that week. How many of you have some battles ahead of you this week? Anybody? Nobody. Very good. Praise the Lord. A few of you. It's increasing by the second. Hold that hand up. I have some battles this week. I could use some miracles. I could use the Word of God for encouragement. Matthew 28. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake. The angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning. His remnant was white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers, the guards, did shake and became like dead men. Thank God the Pharisees wanted Rome to put soldiers there and put a Roman seal on it that no one could open the tomb. It was guarded. And for that body to be taken would cost those soldiers their lives. But how many of you know nothing could stop Jesus coming back from the dead? And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus whom was crucified. He is not here. He is risen. And he said, Come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples He is risen from the dead. Behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did run to bring the disciples his word. Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, John the Baptist said of him when Jesus came to be baptized, Behold the Lamb of God. In front of all his disciples, let's go together, say this together. Behold the Lamb of God. John knew he was coming. The Father had prepared him. And he said these two things about Jesus. He cometh to take away the sins of the world. Can all church say amen? And he will baptize you with what? Holy Spirit and fire. John the Baptist was so humbled when Jesus came to him to be baptized. He carried the greatest anointing in the land. He was a forerunner, a preparer for the Messiah. Their relationship was amazing. When silence was broken, after 400 years of silence from the prophets, They began to hear about Jesus coming on the scene and John the Baptist. Jesus would begin his ministry at age 30 and Jesus came to be baptized because that was Father's will and Jesus always did Father's will and Jesus always taught Father's doctrine and John said, you ought to baptize me. I'm not even worthy to tie your shoes. Jesus said, no, Jesus was told by John the Baptist, no, I must fulfill all righteousness. Grab a hold of that, please. I must fulfill all righteousness. I'll be baptized by you. And in that baptism, Jesus was demonstrating, I give myself to Father. Say that with me. I give myself to Father. I'm completely sold out to Father's will and what fathers want. I give him my life, my soul, my mind. Come on, somebody. My body, everything is his. 
I only want what Father wants. Say again, I only want what Father wants. Jesus demonstrated that in his baptism. Let's grab a hold of that as believers. That I want to reach the full stature of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to become more like him every day. When we're born again, we're born as infants. In the natural, we're born little. And over time, we grow and mature and become adults. We're not the same as when we were little. And when we come to know Christ, we're a new creature in Christ Jesus, but we're young, we're immature, and turn around and tell somebody, we have some growing to do. And God's grace comes. Jesus was arrested when he went into Jerusalem. We began last Sunday commemorating and celebrating the last week of Jesus. 40% of the Gospels are dedicated to the last seven days of his life and all that took place in those seven days. It was a powerful time. Feast of Passover began for the Jewish people on Friday, Friday evening, and the feast is well underway, as I understand it. It's a heightened time in the spirit realm. That's when we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. He was arrested and sentenced to death, and at the request of the Pharisees, he was hung on a cross between two thieves. After his death, the body of Jesus was wrapped in linen cloths and placed in a tomb. A large stone was placed at the opening. And on the third day, on early Sunday morning, the women came, which we just read, to the tomb to finish his body for death, preparing his body. But it would not be necessary. Jesus' body was prepared for death when a woman who was so grateful for her deliverance and freedom as she came uninvited as an unwelcome guest and poured valuable oil on the feet of Jesus and washed it with her hair. She was preparing him for burial. These two ladies found out that he had already been risen from the dead and the tomb was empty. Sitting on the stone was an angel of the Lord. An angel said, do not be afraid. Jesus has risen. Say it together. He has risen. And Matthew 28, 1 through 10 is another account in the Gospels, under inspiration of the Holy Spirit, Matthew records for us, Matthew 28, 1 through 10, and perhaps you and your spouse or friends, or maybe you and your children, your family can read Matthew 28, 1 through 10 and be reminded on this special day as we celebrate Jesus. Enjoy your family. Enjoy your friends. Let's say together, enjoy life. Smile more often. <clears throat> Laugh a lot. Care for one another, love one another, walk with one another through trials because you will have them. And we need to be here to encourage one another and bless one another. And everybody said, amen. amen. Jesus, the Messiah, often called Easter. I like to refer to it as Resurrection Sunday, a time commemorating the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Celebrated during the Feast of Passover, thus never a set day at a set month at a set time because the Jewish festivals are based on lunar calendar. The Jewish calendar is accurate, it's precise. In the Bible, in the first Passover, when God's people were in Egypt, and remember God chose his people out of grace, sovereignly, unconditional, he gave them covenant. They were slaves in the land of Egypt. The abuse had been intolerable. They were crying out to God for salvation, for help, for deliverance. And God had a plan and he was working on it for 400 years. And especially in the last 80, as he was working in a man named Moses. I want you to say this with me. God's still working in people today. And Moses, as he heard from God, told the Israelites, God's chosen people, Slaughter a Passover lamb and put the blood on the door post, if you will. And the Lord protected the Israelites from death. When death angel passed by over those doors, God stood there and would not allow the enemy to come in. For those that followed God's plan of salvation for that household, no death came. For those that worshiped pagan gods and relied on other things, death came. Exodus 12, verse 23. And as a result of that Passover supper, which pointed to Jesus, as all the Old Testament does, the blood of that lamb through repentant heart that sacrificed that lamb and paid a price, 
sins had been covered, looking to the coming Messiah. And when he came, the lamb without spot or wrinkle, who knew, who knew no sin, his blood would not just cover our sins, say it together, it'd wash it away. In New Testament, chapter, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, Paul connects the resurrected Christ to the Passover. Jesus, he says, is the Paschal Lamb, the one who was sacrificed for the salvation of all mankind and all people. Jesus, in Passion Week, celebrated the Last Supper with his disciples during Passover. We're reminded of this when we break bread together and search our hearts and make sure our relationship is right with God and ask God to forgive us of our sins. And we search our heart and ask God to show us if we sinned against someone that we would be swift to go and ask forgiveness and that when someone asks us forgiveness, we would be swift to give it. Can I hear an amen? Say it together. Be quick to ask and be quick to give it. The resurrection of Jesus is to be celebrated. And today we celebrate his life. May you be healed. May you be strengthened. And more importantly, may you come to know Christ. As a boy growing up, mom and dad took us to ch church from the time we were in the womb. I am grateful that my parents took me to church. I enjoyed going to church. I loved my pastor. I really enjoyed when he would read from the word and teach us the Bible. Special seasons like the Easter season and when we would celebrate the birth of Christ. Oh, I would listen with such passion, so hungry for God, even as a child. Much like our children are hungry for the Lord here today, and they're to be commended. Let's say together, thank God for kids. I so enjoyed going to church to celebrate, listening to the pastor speak about Christ. What a beautiful story of truth the gospel message is, the good news of salvation. And everybody said, Amen. Jesus, 100% God, 100% man, God manifest in the flesh, John chapter 1. <clears throat> As I have said many times, he did not rely on his deity and his ministry, his human ministry here on earth. He relied on the Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 16 says, For verily he took not on himself the nature of angels, but he took on himself the seed of Abraham. Grab a hold of that. Hebrews 4, 15, he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet he knew no sin. Jesus came to our level. Say that he came to our level. He demonstrated that man can overcome the powers of darkness. If they just rely on his word and the Holy Spirit, say together his word and Holy Spirit. He demonstrated an ever ascending scale in God. Let's say it together. He moved forward. In Matthew chapter 4, if you want to turn your Bibles there, chapter 4, verse 23. How many of you have some things planned with family today? Raise your hands high. Wave them like this. May you be blessed. How many of you have things planned with some friends today? May the Lord bless you. May those times be very special. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23, after Jesus has been baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus went out all through Galilee, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, healing all manner of sickness, all manner of disease among all the people. In the book of Hebrews, the Bible tells us Jesus is the same what? Yesterday, today, and what? Forever, every day. He still heals, he still cares, and he still ministers. And we're alive today because of him. And we give him glory and we give him honor. Jesus demonstrated the power of God in healing. And he showed us how it's ever ascending. Just go like this. Your, work, your walk with God is ever ascending. All of us, when grace came to us and the Holy Spirit revealed Jesus to us, we recognized we were separated from God because God is holy. And our sin separated him from us. We realized we needed a Savior. We needed a Messiah. Grace came. Say it together. Grace came to every one of us that are saved. May we never forget that. So when we minister to someone that doesn't know Christ, we don't feel like we're condescending, like we're more important than them and putting them down. But our testimony is one of love and how God rescued us and how God saved us. And everybody said, amen. By grace. Ephesians 2 verse 8. I misquoted that this morning with the reference and one brother was very kind, but it's, to help me with that, it's Ephesians 2.8. Say it with me. For by grace, through faith, we're saved. Not our own works, lest we should boast. We do works afterwards because we love the Lord, and God chose us first. We didn't choose him. He chose us. That we might bear what? Say it together. Much fruit 
I want you to say it with me. I'm a fruit bearer in the kingdom of God. I will not go into the text. I'll just cover it briefly. But he ministered healing. To those that were diseased. He ministered healing to those that had issues of blood. He ministered healing to those that were lepers. He ministered healing to the blind. And in more than one occasion, there was creative healing power that operated through him where even eyes were created where there were no eyeballs. <clears throat> he began to have an escalating ministry just like you. Our ministry is like his. He demonstrated the power of God even over death. He ministered in Luke chapter 8 to a man's daughter who was dying. While he was interceding, and we'll pray on Monday night if, with intercession if you'd like to come and join us. The father petitioned him, would you come pray for my daughter? There's nothing worse than having a child that's facing death and fighting for their lives. It's one of the most challenging things you can ever have as a parent. But wisdom, say together, wisdom goes to Jesus for help. And that's what this father did. And while he's petitioning Jesus, come to my house, pray for my daughter. I will. But a woman touched him with an issue of blood and Jesus stopped. I want you to say this with me. Keep worshiping. Even when things are delayed, keep worshiping. Don't stop. And she knelt down at his feet. Who touched me? I did. And he wanted to completely restore her. The disciples didn't understand. The crowd was so big and so demanding, so pressing. He wanted to restore her back into society, not just heal her. And God wants to heal all of us, deliver all of us. Come on, somebody, and put us back into life. Then he ministered to him on faith. All the while, the father of the 12-year-old, Jairus, stayed right there by, her, by his feet, not leaving. Didn't get offended. Didn't walk off. And the servant came and said, don't bother the master any longer. Your daughter has died. Their faith had a limitation. I want you to say it with me. But faith has no limitations. And faith comes from God. It's a heavenly substance. And Jesus said, do not fear. Come on. Grab a hold of faith and get rid of fear. When you grab a hold of faith, fear begins to leave. The dreams that are in your heart that the Lord put there can come to pass. There's nothing too difficult for God. God can move in your life in any area and change anything. And Jesus went with the Father. He took, five, he took disciples with him. Six of them entered the room, and the little girl came back to life. Praise the Lord. Say together. Praise the Lord. Dead maybe only a few minutes, and then later on, dead for a few hours, he went into Nain, a city, a little town. And there was a woman leaving there, and her son was in a coffin. When you examine this carefully, probably he was part of military, probably related somewhat in such a way that his body would have been embalmed, which means all his organs were gone, which means you cannot touch the casket either. Hold your hand up, and Jesus laid his hand on the coffin. That part we know in the Word for sure. And that boy came back to life. Come on, that, uh, that widow's son came back to life. Let's give God praise. He'd been dead several hours. Luke 7, 14. And Lazarus was very sick. And he loved Jesus, and Jesus loved him, and he loved his sisters, and they, they sent for Jesus. He was quite some way away. Come now, Lazarus is sick. But how many of you know Father obey, uh, Jesus obeyed Father? Not what people wanted or the demands that were placed on him by others or situations. He would wait four days before he ministered to Lazarus, and they would meet him. John 11, verse 39, he stinks. By day four, your body deteriorates extremely rapidly. Jesus ministered life from the dead for the one who had been dead a few minutes. He ministered life to the dead for the one who had been dead several hours. And now he's going to minister life to the one who had been dead for four days. And he had them roll the stone away, move the stone. Say it with me. Come forth. Lazarus, come forth. Say it again. Lazarus, come forth. If he hadn't said Lazarus, every dead person ever died would have come back to life. Lazarus, come forth. And he came forth, unbind him, take the bounds off of this man. And then he himself rose from the dead. Jesus told his disciples that he would. 
He said he would be crucified, that he would die, but that he would come forth from the dead on the third day. He was a living man as no one ever before him. He came forth from the dead. Can I hear an amen? If the worship team would come back for me, go ahead and take your place. I'm not going to take too much longer, and I don't know for sure what all I'm going to do from this point on. Praise the Lord. But it'll be good if it's God. And I trust it will be. I appreciate you for you praying for me. Uh, for those of you that love me and are happy I'm here and alive and well, thank you. For those of you that love me and not so sure yet if you're happy I'm here or not, uh, thank you for praying for me. For those of you who'd like to see me replaced in the near future, I got some disappointing news for you. I think I'm going to live to be 95. I plan on being here a long time. Now go ahead and tell somebody that is one strong willed man. I often ask you, Lord, why'd you send me here to pastor these people? I won't tell you all the reason why. I guess because he loves you and I needed a training ground. John the Revelator had a revelation of Jesus after his resurrection, after his ascension. Verse 18 of Revelation 1 I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Hold your hand out and have the keys of hell and of death, two enemies of mankind. He defeated them. And he rose from the dead. I believe God wants to give us a revelation that Jesus is not dead, that he's very much alive. And all the church said, Amen. Come on, one more time. Amen. Amen. Now, I'm just going to say this quickly and try to close. You all can come down here, it helps inspire me. All right? Jesus, if you stand back there, I don't know you're here, and I'm not motivated to finish. This helps me finish, Samuel. Be sure to smile when you're up here. Smile quite a bit now. See, look at Julie's smile. She has new earrings. Did you notice? They are new. Yes. You've seen them before? Well, I don't think you've seen them on Julie. They're new to you, right? Oh, look at that. Praise the Lord. You will discover, Samuel, that it pays, it pays to pay attention to wool on sheep. And everybody said, where was I? Do you remember? Matthew 28. Thank you. Verse 18. Jesus came forth from the dead. Say together, he came forth from the dead. The child been dead for a few minutes, came forth. The son been dead for several hours. Lazarus dead for several days. We sang a song about a man they were in battle. He died. His friends threw him in a tomb as they were fleeing from their enemies, and his body landed on Elijah's bones. Elisha's bones. And what happened? He resurrected, came back to life. And the double anointing he asked for from Elijah came to pass in that miracle. Elijah did seven, he did 14. Praise the Lord, somebody. And his friends were probably tired and threw him in the tomb and ran off. And he rose up from the dead and took off and probably passed them. Because when you come back from the dead, you're well and you're not sick. But none of them had any power or any revelation to pass on to anyone, only Jesus. Say it with me, only Jesus. And he's still passing on that power today. He said to his disciples, all power, reach out your hand, is given to me in heaven and earth. And he's giving it to us by way of Holy Spirit. Say it together. All power. And with that, I'm going to close, except for a little message on salvation. Now, I want you to say this with me. I am a soul winner. Now, we're going to pray for leaders. We're going to pray, pray for people in authority. We're going to pray for nations. Come on, somebody. But when we get sent, we're sent to share the gospel, cast out devils, heal the sick, grow the church, raise the church, expand the church. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Help the hungry. Help those that are in need. Pray for those in authority and there'll be peace in the land because then sharing the gospel is easier. It's a lot harder to share the gospel when you're in the middle of a civil war, trust me. And just trying to get back to the airport can be life-threatening and is deadly for many. So praying for peace in the land is important. 
But the whole time I'm there, I said, the whole time I'm there, I'm there to share the gospel and minister Christ. My son contacted me one day. I was preaching in another state. And he was broken. He's got a tender heart. And uh, he said, Dad, my friend, call him by name. His grandpa's dying. He's in the hospital. He's in bad condition. And he wants to know if you'll go pray for him. He has surgery first thing in the morning, early in the morning. What do you want me to tell him? I said, you tell him. It's about 10 at night. I said, I just finished this service. I'm all done. I think I'm a little less than eight hours from the hospital. I'll be there in the morning before he goes to surgery. Tell him I'm in route. I grab a hold of that. I went in there like I owned the place. Grab a hold of the anointing. That's what authority does. But in love, I'm a pastor. I was called upon by this person. He has surgery. He may not live through it. He's in critical condition. I need to get in and pray with him now. Go ahead, pastor. Here's the tag, clergy, blah, blah, blah. And in we come. And I walked into his room in intensive care and He's all hooked up and plugged in. They're going to take him to surgery pretty soon. There's quite a bit of family around him, several. I don't remember, maybe a dozen, maybe a little more. It's quite a bit, intensive care room. A lot of tension there, and a lot of people were scared, and there were tears. I said, sir, my name's Jeff Johns. I'm a senior pastor at Whitehorse Christian Center, and your grandson that loves you contacted my son, his friend, and asked me to come pray for you because he wants you to live. That's why I'm here. I said, may I pray for you that you'd be healed and come through this surgery? And his wife was sitting there holding his hand, standing there beside him. She said, yes, please. Thank God for people that want prayer. And uh, I said, well, sir, I'm going to pray for you. And I do believe that God's going to heal you. And I don't tell people that unless the Lord spoke that to me. I'll say, I'll pray a word of faith with you. I'll pray the word of God over you and I'll stand with you in prayer. But I believe I had a word of knowledge. Grab hold of that. That's different. So you can say it different. I do believe the Lord said that you will live and I'm going to pray for you. But what's most important is if you die, that you know Jesus Christ before so you can have eternal life. And I said, wouldn't you like for me to just explain salvation to you in just a moment so you can be saved and receive Christ? And his wife said, yes, we would. And he had tears in his eyes. I said, what about you, sir? Because this prayer of faith is for you. You don't pray it for your grandson. You're not praying it for your wife. You're receiving Christ right now as your Lord and Savior and trusting in Jesus as your Savior. He said, I would like that too. And the Lord wants us to have a few verses on the tip of our tongue and be able to share our heart with freedom to those that are all around us that are dying. Can I hear an amen? John 3, 16, we know it well for... God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever, and we were all whosoever's, and we were all in sin, Romans 3, 23, we've all sinned, say God, we've all sinned, and fallen short of the glory of God. We all need a Savior. God is holy, but God is just, and sin can't be in His presence, and so He has a plan of salvation. And the price of sin is what? Romans 5, 20, Romans 5, 8. And Romans 6, 23 is that Jesus paid the price of sin for each and every one of us. And everybody said, let's all stand together if you would. And if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and trust Christ for your personal salvation, not your works, not your name, but in the work of Christ for you to be born again. If you're ready to receive Christ and you want to confess your sin, you can be born again right now and have eternal life. In Romans 10, verse 13, say it together, Romans 10, 13. <laughs> and I want to read it. You'll bear with me just a minute. Whosoever, say it together, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Sir, you can be saved right here, right now. And 90 seconds later, we were saying a prayer together. A simple prayer that goes something like this. Lord, I've sinned. And I know that I'm separated from you because of sin. And I believe you sent your only begotten son who knew no sin. to Take upon himself my sin. He died for me. I want to invite you into my heart. I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior right now. And I thank you 
for my salvation. I confess with my mouth what I believe in my heart. And I trust you and your work for my salvation. And I want to ask you, Lord, to help me become more like Jesus. Grab hold of that. Help me become more like Jesus. That I could fulfill all righteousness and give him glory and honor in my life. That my life would be an example for others to follow. From this day on, I help people walk into light and life and truth and come out of death. They might have eternal life. In Jesus' name. Together, in Jesus' name. A simple prayer like that. A simple prayer. God has revealed John 3.16, Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, Romans 5.8, Romans 10.8.9, Romans 10.13. I've led people to the Lord and so have many of you in less than two minutes. And some of them didn't have much more time to live than that. And God wants to light a fire in you and me and all of us to go back to what really matters, and that's sharing Christ and praying with people. And to help us that our belief system and our value system come into alignment with the Word of God and that we walk in the fruit of the Spirit, the love of God, to minister hope and life and encouragement to people that no matter where they are, how terrible it may be, or what kind of mess they've made, Jesus, say again, Jesus is here to give hope. And with that, I'm going to close. And we're going to begin to worship the Lord. Can I hear an amen? And the prophetic words of encouragement can wait till next week. They won't go away. They'll just get better. In the meantime, grab a hold of the Word of God. Say together, grab a hold of the Word of God and all the Lord is doing. And thank you for waiting and letting us release you as pastors when the time is right. And we're going to worship. And I ask the Lord to bless you. And I ask the Lord to seal these words in your heart today. I ask the Lord to light a fire inside of us to share Christ and Him crucified. Be swift to pray with people and be there when neighbors are in trouble, when friends, people at work, or church family. We ask you to knit, knit us together with ligaments of love today. Let the gospel be swift. Help us to not be distracted as things in the world become worse around us. It's not a negative confession. It's what Jesus said. All kind of mess around us. But the glory of God will increase on the body of Christ and the power that he came back with that was different than anybody else that came back from the dead has been released to us by the Holy Spirit. And nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God or one another. And no weapon formed against the church will ever prosper. Where the church can be above ground, so be it, and blessing. Where the church needs to be below ground to stay alive and win the loss, so be it. And may nothing stop it. We lift up every national leader in the name of Jesus. And we ask you to touch them and minister to them. And we pray for those that are suffering and hurting and broken and lost. That we would be a light. That we would go to them with a hand reaching out to help them and to bring life. In the precious and mighty name of Jesus. And all the church said, amen. Come on, let's give God praise. Let's worship for just a moment. And then we will open the altars and release you. God bless you. Let's worship. Just a few moments. As we come to the conclusion of our service, hey, thank you for joining us, being online with us. We so enjoy you being a part in our relationship and being a part of what God is doing. We consider it an honor. We thank the Lord has given us opportunity to share what's happening here at Whitehorse with all of you wherever you are. I want to encourage you and remind you, if you would like to give, there are different ways to give. You can give online, whcc.net. You can give by phone by calling the church, 765-477-1111. Or you can come by and give in person. Your giving helps us maintain, sustain, and continue the work of the gospel and reaching out to the nations. Be sure to tithe your local church. Be a blessing to your pastors, your elders, and your leaders. Send your testimonies to us, please. We love to hear your testimonies and share them. My testimony at whcc.net. Be sure to pray with one another as we've come to conclusion. Let the theme of the message today and what Holy Spirit is doing be joined with faith that you might move forward in the power of the Holy Spirit and be blessed. Thank you for our relationship. 
Thanks for all you've done to help us carry out the vision. God bless you.